Hey everyone, it's the 1st of July and it is two minutes past nine and it's a Monday evening. No, nope, sorry, it's two minutes past eight, not nine. Obviously I cannot read the digital clock on the PC because it wasn't until I looked up at that one I was like, oh, it's not nine, it's eight. <laughs> anyway, I actually thought I would... Uh, First off, just to show you the lamps that I've, uh, the road lamps that is, the barricade lamps, that I've acquired over the past month. Because uh, a few more arrived today actually, and I've actually bought one recently too. So, we'll start from that end. This one, the lens on this one, and these two lamps, were sent to me by a um, fellow collector and friend of mine. Um, this it looks like you know the umpteen lamps of that I've got in the bedroom, but it's not. I'll put that there because I will show you the dif the um, difference. But he sent me the lens to go on this body, so I've now got an, a complete early version of that lamp. Um, that one is just another spare uni lamp, eco light. I can't remember. Although, I'm pretty certain my other one does not have... when well, I can get it in the light now, I can read it. Yeah, it is an Ecolite. Mine... This has got Unipart Dormant on, which means this is quite a late one. Because so I'm pretty certain... I'll have a look in the bedroom when we go in there... that my other Ecolites do not have Unipart, Unipart Dormant on the bottom. This one... I can't remember what you said. It's got a hole in the lens. And I thought, you know, something had gone bang straight through it, but I think this is the version that had a red hook on the lens, so you could hang it. Um, I think that's broken off. I'm sure if he sees this video, he will correct me in Facebook Messenger, but I think that's what that is. These I got off another collector and friend of mine. He's got a lemon lens version to the side for me as well. I've got to get that when I can. Um, and I got those I think a couple of weeks ago. That one's just another random Nissan Monolite that I picked up. This one was a random buy on eBay. Literally a random buy. The uh, same friend that posted these to me sent me a link on Facebook to this one. This one was being sold rather locally to me in Norwich. I've bought from that seller before and I've not had a problem. Um, not with um, receiving goods anyway. Although this was said to have um, a photo cell on it. But uh, I couldn't get it to work. But then again I was doing it in here with um, artificial, you know, the main lights on it. It was dark outside so... Maybe I need to be in a brighter room for it to activate. It depends how the sensitivity is set. But anyway, I'm not really fussed about that, whether it has or it hasn't. I'm just glad to have what I can tell as a later version of this. Um, for one, it's got black bolt. Two, it's got a darker coloured lens. And three, it's got a push button switch there, not a slide switch. The um, older ones had a slide switch, so they had a hole this side and a hole this side. So you push it one way for on and the other way for off. And this moulding, this body moulding, has actually still got the markings on the top there for on off. Uh, so yeah, the fact this one hasn't got it is, um, to me, tells me it's a it's a later one. So it's um, to me it's a different version to what I've already got, even if it does look the same. So I like it. I like these lamps anyway, so photo cell or no photo cell or a non-working photo cell, I don't really give a monkeys. It's a working lamp. And it's one of my favourite lamps, so. Right. Let's go to the bedroom. While we're on the subject. My uh, buddy did send me a bunch of other stuff, but I'll show you that in a minute. So if you look at these lenses. And you might be able to just see that handle. These lenses have got what we call little knobs on the top. And that handle's got 
bit more of a sharp angle there, some extra sharp angles in it, whereas this one doesn't. And this one, as you can see, does not have the knobs on the top, so I might as well hang that up here now. So I've got an early one. So I've got a couple of uh, JSP micro lights up there. Oh, I think that's a J These are the eco lights. I was going to look at the bottom of these just to see if they've got Unipart Dorman on them. Nope, this one does not have Unipart Dorman on it. What about this one? No, that one doesn't. This has got Dorman South Part. Southport. So these must be earlier ones. These must have been produced before Dorman changed their name to Unipart Dorman. Uh, which means I've got a later model. Which to me equals a different version. A variation of it. Because it's got something different on it. The bottom print is different. So to me it's a different lamp. So near. Yeah. <laughs> Some people may not agree with me on that, but that's just me. I think that warrants as being a different version because it's a, obviously a later version. Yeah. This one looks like the one in the lounge, but this one's made by Dorman. And there's a lot of differences, you know. The um, base of the lens is different. This has also got the bolt hole through it and the lens is bigger but uh, the other one in here is an El Remco um, which is a lot older smaller lens see the base is different El Remco and this has got the old British Telecom logo on it a very old one actually this was 70s and 80s this logo so that one's quite an early lamp it's actually got a bit of weight in it because it is uh, has got a battery in it yeah, um, yeah. My friend also sent me a spare circuit for one of the lamps that I've got. I've actually changed the capacitor on this one. I was actually just experimenting, just to see, because um, there's quite a dim flash on these lamps, but I think they're naturally dim anyway, because this one's the same. But I noticed they've got a very old style. Well, I don't think it's quite old style on this. The transistors in there are old style. I've not seen ones like that before, round topped one, but the capacitor was um, what they call radial, it had a lead coming out of each end. Um, and being electrolytic I thought well for a bit of practice I will uh, just chuck on another electrolytic capacitor. This one's a bit smaller, I think the one I took off was 127 microfarad, that one's 100, but it works fine so it hasn't actually made any difference. I didn't think that's you know that slight difference in rating would actually have an effect on it. Here it is. See what I mean? It's got a lead on that end and a lead on this end rather than uh, two leads out of the bottom. What was the rating? 125 microfarad. So it's only 25 mic out, so like I said, it seems to work. I didn't trim the leads, I only bodged it on there because I just wanted to see if it would work. I might have a look on eBay and see if I can get some closer. Um, and I'll probably change it if I can find them. I will change it on the uh, other circuits just as, you know, a due course thing because it is electrolytic. And it's so easy to do. Where is the other one? Because it's a spare circuit for this lamp here. And that's got the same capacitor on it because I had a look at it earlier. So I think, well, if I could actually find another 100 mic cap, which I don't think I've got in here. No, I've got 47s, I've got 470. Well, I have got some hundreds, so I could actually change it if I wanted to. <clears throat> but then again, if I'm going to change it, I might as well buy some brand new ones to do that with. What's the point in using used ones? I don't know why I kept the used ones, actually. <sighs> really? Do you know how... I've got this urge just to tap the box, but I know that'll make him jump. 
and I'm not actually in the mood to make him jump. Um, I need to find some boxes or something. That's why that box is in here, actually, because the bottoms fell out of two of the drawers. I actually fell out the top one first. Because all the bottom fell out the top one with everything in it, it hit the bottom one, or the middle one, and took the bottom straight out of that one as well. So I actually ended up with um, three drawers worth of crap in one drawer. <laughs> so these drawers are knackered. So I need to just temporarily box stuff up. I've got so much phones and chargers, I was going to throw them in that bigger box. Uh, and then maybe tuck it under the bed for now. It might go under there. And then perhaps put something like all my torches in that box, because I haven't got as many as them. And then just gradually clear all that out, because I'm going to need to store it temporarily. To not find another like uh, cabinet or chest of drawers or something for storage. It's a bit of a bummer really that was. Never mind. Um, I'm still waiting to meet up with a friend of mine again. So I can give him these three lamps there. Not this mono light because that doesn't work. I'm pretty certain it's that one that doesn't work. Uh, well, I've got a spare uni lamp there, but I know he's got several of those, so I don't know if he'd actually want that one. Uh, not the cage. That's my cage as well. It's the only one I've got. Yeah, just these. I might even chuck in another. Actually, yeah, that is an older bodied one, so I might actually throw this one in as well. Which I think I was supposed to. I think it is meant to be here. So he's got a newer one and an older one. Unfortunately, I haven't got an older lens to put on that one. Uh, but yeah, and I suppose if he if he wants that one, he can take it. But uh, we haven't had the chance to organise meeting up. But uh, yeah, he's got some more. I know he's got at least one more beacon for me. Uh, so I thought yeah, he can have those lamps. I've got duplicates of them. Yeah, that one works, but it's ridiculously dim, so there's a fault there somewhere. I might actually try and fault find it, see if I can fix it. And I've got another spare one of those in my outside cupboard. Plus, I've got two up there. And uh, apparently this one is actually quite unusual, because it's got the reflective sticker on the front. I can't remember where I got that one from. I really can't. One of these, I actually think I got this one from a charity shop, if I remember correctly. I know I got a lamp like that from the charity shop, but it could have been that one. <clears throat> right. Kitchen, that's next. I'll tell you a funny story in a bit as well. <laughs> So, kitchen still looks like a complete shithole, so we'll just pretend that doesn't exist. But I bought a couple of these containers um, a couple of weeks ago and basically sorted those drawers out and whatnot and sorted all my tools and things out. So now I've got like a, an easy to get to point in the flat with um, all my tools in, which I think is actually better than using a, an actual toolbox because you've got to open it up and then dig through it for your tools at least here I know what's in what drawer but uh, sitting in the front here we've got some of these bits cases it's one from Lidl's the handle came off of that stem bit that's actually in the bedroom I'm going to have to put those two bits back together but uh, that was me that broke that it wasn't because it was a Lidl's brand that was actually me getting a bit too heavy handed with it for something you know that's not designed to be used as you know as heavy handed as I was using it so I put all of that there I got this here that was given to me by a friend that's another bits box various screwdriver bits and Torx bits etc this is my Bosch kit that my stepdad got for me and that's a tool kit I've had for a while as well it's just like a mini tool kit 25 piece mini tool kit. It's not quite 25 piece now. Some of it's missing, but that just opens up like that. I've 
got three of these missing. So it's a 22 piece at the minute. <laughs> but yeah, that's all that's in it. I think I paid like three quid from a charity shop for that. About six pounds brand new and you can still get them. So what I've done, bottom drawer is pliers and wire cutters and things. And if they cut wires or they're a pair of pliers, they're in there. Um, I've got my big multi screwdriver there, then I've got the wire strippers, my crimping tool, and my spirit level in there. Bunch of assorted screwdrivers in there, various sizes. See, I didn't take all of them to mum's. I kept my favourite ones that I liked using on the PC, I kept here, and all the small precision ones I kept here because I do a lot of my tinkering here, not at mum's. So I kept all that stuff there, so that's what's in that drawer. This one, I've got my tape measures, my magnifying glass, a pair of forcep things, hexagon keys, a couple of various wrenches. I've got the um, barbell spanner there for bikes, and an adjustable hexagon tool there. I've got my volt stick and a couple of lighters for the heat shrink. People always think, the first thing people think when they see those lighters is that I've started smoking and I haven't. It's just for things like heat shrink. Uh, that's just batteries, there's a couple of paint brushes and a universal power adapter in there. Then I've got my wire wool in that top drawer along with the Clark drill charger. This one, I've just got some assorted flashlights and things in there, and some files I think are in that tub in there. I've got some various testers in here and an analog, analog multimeter. I've got this tester in there, I've got this continuity tester. I've got a neon tester, which no one actually likes to use, it's just in there. And I've got a 12 volt continuity tester there as well. Don't really need it, you know, it's more for. Um, engines and vehicles and that sort of thing just to make sure you've got 12 volts where you need it and whatnot but I still like it. That one I've got one of my um, soldering irons in there and the glue gun and lastly I've just got things like my solder, cable ties, glues, PVC tapes in that one and then sitting on the top I've got these assortments Bits and bobs there, I've got heat shrink, my multimeter, and some uh, crimp ends, cable ties, heat shrink in these boxes. These are something from Lidl's. I grabbed three of these a couple of weeks ago because I got a stock of them in and with Lidl's. you got to get them while they're there. Otherwise, you've got to wait however many months it is before they um, cycle back round again. And they have all these bits in. That's pro even providing Lidl's decide to have them back in and not decide to discontinue them. So I do like to just grab things like that when I see they're only $2.99 for a case. I've already got an open one up there. I've got another open one at Mum's along with a load of other assorted loose bits at Mum's. So I bought three with the intent to take one down to Mum's and put in my workshop there. But then I thought, well, I've got one there and I've got all the other assorted ones in all the... I've got like a little organiser thing full of them so I thought well, I don't really need them there do I? I must just keep, that, keep it here and take it down as and when and if I ever need some more down there. Uh, I couldn't get my seaside batteries up there. Draw it big enough. Uh, no I haven't. Nothing's really changed in the kitchen you know. Like I said there's a Shithole as ever, I know it is. I'm actually surprised. Really surprised I've not been trolled in my comments on any of my videos about that, to be honest. That really has surprised me. We've got a Nissan Skyline right there. I don't know how it got over there, but that's a duplicate. I need to uh, get that posted up on a Facebook group and get that sold, I think. I don't know what's going to be worth to anyone. It's going to be worth at least a quid. I know it cost me one pound fifty, but I'll accept a pound for it. I'm never in. I'm not in these hobbies, you know, to make money. That's not what I got into these hobbies for. Got into them for me because they make me happy, you know, because I enjoy looking at them, as well as you know, preserving history. 
even though Roadworks history is probably something very few people are going to be interested in, but I've also got the computer stuff and whatnot and tapes, you know. All preserved. <laughs> ah, that's where it is. There's the handle bit to that screwdriver. Ooh, there's another bit in there as well that I forgot about. See, it's supposed to go in there and it's supposed to lock in there, but it doesn't. It just keeps falling out. And uh, I could glue it, but I don't think the glue would hold, to be honest. Anyway, shall I tell you that funny story? Well, I went out for a walk last night. About one o'clock in the morning, I just went for a walk. I went over to Sainsbury's and then just did a big circle, basically, and came back. And uh, came in the back door. There was a little mouse running around in the stairwell on the ground floor, running around in the hallway. So I thought, well, that's new. It's usually birds that end up flying around down there. So, um... I could have done it the easy way. I could have just opened the door and just let it run out. But I actually wanted the challenge, because I've always wanted to see if I could catch a mouse with my bare hands, because everyone has said, now nah, you won't catch it, they're too, too quick, you know? So, I did actually catch the mouse. But while I was trying to catch it, I was on my hands and knees, and it decided to run straight at me, underneath me and between my legs and I thought oh, shit I don't want to squash the poor thing so I got up very carefully and I couldn't find it now there's I couldn't find it for a good five minutes I looked everywhere down there I was looking upstairs I was looking all over the floor even up the walls because they're good climbers believe it or not I found that out because I did watch them go up a couple of walls they can jump pretty well as well I did actually trying to catch the mouse taught me quite a lot about them I was quite surprised. This was a little field mouse, so that's quite small as well. Um, but anyway, I'm standing there thinking, well, he couldn't have gone anywhere. There's nowhere to go. <laughs> There's no little ho holes for him to get through. Not that uh, uh, big enough for him to get through. So I thought, well, where is he? Where's he gone? And he had me baffled for ages. And all of a sudden, I felt something moving on my back. And I was like... Nah, he hasn't done that, has he? He had. He had somehow gone up my leg and up under my T-shirt. He was between me and the T-shirt. He'd actually got up under it. And he was on my back, hiding under my T-shirt. But because he was so still and so light, you know, light on his feet and whatnot, I just didn't notice he was there. I mean, I've seen the videos on, like, YouTube and whatnot where these mice hide on the car wheel. I don't know if anyone has seen that one. This mouse hides on the car wheel while this cat just goes round in circles trying to find the mouse. <laughs> you know? But yeah, I did actually learn a lot. It actually reminded me, because I'd totally forgotten they like to do this, that they play dead sometimes, you know? They'll just lay there as if they're dead. <laughs> um how fast they are, how agile they are. They are real agile little critters. I mean, they can jump pretty high. They can jump from quite heights, quite big heights. And I can climb vertical brick walls. Even though their little claws do not hurt you or barely scratch you, I found that quite amazing. You know, how it was gripping onto my back, onto my skin, and I could barely feel it. But yeah, I did actually catch him and I took him outside and put him down by the bird feeders because there's seeds and food and whatnot there. I think that's what, uh, well, I don't think I know that's what attracts them in the first place. Because I've seen mice scurrying off from that when I've gone walking up to the shed. I've seen them going across the ground and the hedge. Uh, doesn't bother me. It doesn't even bother me if there's a rat around there, to be honest. There probably is. There probably is rats around here because of that. But to me, wildlife is wildlife. <laughs> and I tapped the um, flap on the cardboard box and Nemo's looking really pissed off, look. <laughs> and it went like that. That's all it did.
Yeah, you're not going to like me. I'm going to wait until you get out of that box, but you're not going to like me because I'm going to fill it with crap. <laughs> I wouldn't get out of it because I'll fill it with crap. You might want to stay in there. And it, oh, that laptop down there reminds me with my all these socks I've got to go in the bin. They're full of holes. <laughs> but yeah, that's that Dell laptop I got at the car boot sale the other week. And uh, there's definitely a problem with it not recognising any hard drive or anything is connected. But it will recognise when this external hard drive is connected. I actually tried to boot from it. I left these two off, the hard drive and SSD disconnected, and just plugged in the USB one, and it came up with um, NTLDR is missing. So obviously, it seen that as the boot device, and uh, tried to boot from it, but couldn't find an operating system. Um, so I know it can seek the boot device fine. I know that's working fine. So the problem. I'm thinking is the actual ribbon cable. I think that's got damaged and it's no longer making a good connection. That's my theory. For five pounds something, I think I'm going to take the gamble and get a brand new one from eBay. Um, there's no point to getting it going. I just like Dell laptops. I would like to put it into light use if you like and a light service up here on this bedside cabinet i've got the, the uh, lenovo up there at the minute but i barely use that so it would be very light service uh, that's what i'd like to do but we'll see i've got to get it going first uh, going back to uh the friend that sent me those lamps he also sent me a couple of light switches those are always handy to have because um, I had to replace one in the kitchen the other day at Mum's. Another one. I think this is the MK one. Yeah. The other one's a new leg. And then there's a MK unswitched outlet as well. And there's some, uh, some wire somewhere, but I can't remember what I've done with it. Uh, oh, and an outside light he sent me as well. I was just going to put these socks in the bin. They're no good. Ain't no good. Uh, oh, pardon me. Okie dokie. Turn this light off now. Oh, I can see it. It's down here. Look. Big bundle of that white single core wire. That is actually brilliant. I could probably use this. <laughs> On dynamo lights for bicycles because I'm always looking for some decent wire to do that with. So if you see this video, thanks buddy. Much appreciated for that. And there's the outside light you sent me as well. Another one of them bulkheads. These were quite common at one point. This one's brand new as well. I didn't realise that was brand new. Knockouts there haven't been taken out nor has that one. And uh, still got all the cage on it and whatnot. I do like these, and I was tempted to put this one up on that wooden batten. Because it does get quite dark up there, so I was going to put this up there with a brighter light bulb in it. To be I couldn't take the cable from this, so it came on with that main light, but never mind. It's either there, or I was going to put it on this wall somewhere. Stupid camera come up with an error and then shut off again. It does that every now and again, I don't know why. Anywho, as I said, I don't know if I'm going to put it up there or up there yet. Thank you, Mr. Motorbike. <laughs> that was rather loud. Right. Is there anything else I want to talk about? Well, actually, I could talk about lots of things, but I'm not going to because I'm not going to rise to debate. <clears throat> oh, we did go to um, yard sales yesterday at a um, little village of Buxton with Lammas. And uh, I've got these vehicles here, these die casts. Not the Lego, just the die casts. 
Uh, oh, just before I go through to the bedroom to show you a little bit. These mirrors came as well, so I've got the mirrors for the bike. Hi. Um, all the way from China. I didn't realise they were coming from China. I thought the location was in England. I don't know why I thought the location was in England. It clearly says, under postage, services from outside UK. But for some reason, I still thought it was in the UK. I was wondering why they were taking ages to get it. Anyway, I also got these two speakers and that cassette adapter for a pound. In fact, I got a pair of similar speakers from the same garden a couple of years ago. Uh, what else did I get? I got a bike seat that's still in Mum's car because I forgot to take it out. And a fuse box to upgrade the um, fuse box in my shed again because it was only two pounds. <laughs> oh, and just for a bit of authenticity, I've got those stereo stereo speakers. Well, they are stereo speakers, but they're for a PC. I was going to try and set them up here somewhere. Like I said, for a bit of authenticity. For crap. <laughs> Basically, if you like crap audio. Well, they're TX, so I don't think they're going to be that bad. But if, as you can see, they've got the European plug on. But I can change that. Because the voltage here is the same as it is over there. So, I'll just put a UK plug on it. I've done it before. It will work. For some reason, my glass has gone missing. I was going to get myself a drink. Turn that one off now. I'll leave those ones on. Not really done anything Lego wise. I've got to think of something for a Lego video later. I'm going to have to charge the camera up. I've got this. This is a good model of a broken down digger though. Um, it's not as broken down as it was. Built, well, I bought this from a car boot sale, what, three weeks ago? Something like that. And it needed some parts, so I ordered what parts I knew it needed. I then started building it earlier last week and found I needed these bits in here, these linkage bits. So for a few days it didn't have a bucket tilt, it only went up and down. And then I found out that this cylinder on the end there is completely knackered, but it doesn't seal whatsoever. That one barely seals. So I'm going to get a couple of uh, replacements as well this week. Um, that that'll be a fully restored and working model. I really want to get another one of these bits in here in yellow as well because it's meant to be yellow but can't find them. Found them in grey and every other bloody colour apart from yellow. That seems to be um, your proverbial hen's teeth, you know. Or rocking horse shit or whatever term you want to use. That's actually quite annoying. My gar gas station roof is not sitting on this corner properly for some reason. And I've got a wonky light there as well. What's happened there? Have I knocked it? Or has Nemo knocked it? Nemo may have knocked it because he went across there the other day. <clears throat> it's not often he knocks into things like that, but he does do it sometimes. So he may have. Bless him. He was eating. I don't know where he is now. Oh, he's back in the bedroom. Right. Yeah, this fuse box I bought, I bought that for a reason. The one I've installed in the shed, which I'm pretty certain I've shown you in a previous video, is just a, a rewirable fuse box with um, circuit breaker upgrades installed. They just plug straight in. Something that was done back in the day as an easy upgrade. Um, because all circuit breakers are, they're just a resettable fuse, basically. Because all a fuse does is protect against overload. You know, they will only handle a certain amount of current before going pop. Um, and that's pretty much all a standard circuit breaker does. There's an overload on the circuit, poof, it'll pop. And you can just go back to it and uh, switch it back on. So long as there's still not a problem on the circuit it's protecting, it will reset. Um, but it doesn't have an RCD or anything in it. This one I bought does. It's only a... F I think it's a six wire, so I think I could have six circuits on at max. There's only two breakers, 
plus the RCCD. I don't know what the second... I'm going to look that up. Because I cannot remember what RCCD stands for. RCD is a residual current device. Um, I can't remember what RCCD is. I know it's something along those lines. RCCD, I'm just going to Google it. The meaning. Ah. Oh, it's the same thing. It's just a different name for it. A residual current circuit breaker. It's just the same thing from the look of it. Um, but if you're wondering, that is why these RCDs will always trip, even with the power turned off, if you touch like the neutral to the earth or the live to the earth. Because I did it the other day. Turned everything off outside so I could do the electrics in the summer house. There is no caravan there, so I've got to take the camera down there to show you guys what's going on there now. Caravan's gone, summer house has been put there, so I was doing the electrics in there. I didn't even get to cut the wire, I just touched the wire on the end of the cuz and it's went boop, trip the RCD. Because there's not enough current there for us to feel. Power's off, you know, so there's nothing there for us to feel. It wouldn't hurt us, wouldn't do nothing. Wouldn't even know about it. But it's still just enough to trip the bloody RCD. And I've done that I don't know how many times. That does get annoying. I cheated in the end. I went to the um, fuse spur in the summer house and took the earth wire out so it wasn't connected. <laughs> While I did the work that I was doing and then put it all back in. <laughs> because I could, I could guarantee that it would have done it again. If I hadn't done that. Right. I am going to shut the video down because it's gone on for quite a while now. So I've still loads more I could chat about, but I'm going to shut this down. I'm going to charge it because I want to get a video done for the LEGO channel. And then hopefully I can edit those later if I don't get too tired. So uh, thanks a lot for watching. I will uh, talk to you all in the next video. Bye.